And now it's on. Amazingly, I didn't know my microphone was off, but um, a little icon down at the bottom of the screen soon told me it was. So, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, now I hear myself and repeat because I often do that. Reset. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 2021. Finally. Finally. We're in a new year. Uh, although it happens every year that we come into a new year. Um, so I'll just, I'll mark that. I'll say that that's actually occurred and we can move on. Welcome to the first episode of Savannah Performance Project, the show. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very uh, enthused and excited about this year. I, I think things are just going to go in an upward trajectory, uh, not only for uh, possibly myself, but uh, the Savannah community at whole. I think we're going to really take hold of this year and, and, and just grab it by the, with, I, by the fist. I wanted to say something else, but I want to keep it clean. Folks, tonight... On our program, we have two very, very acclaimed, talented, exciting individuals. Uh, my first guest tonight is Mr. William Mark McCullough, who um, is from Savannah and has been working as a film and television actor for over, I want to say, eight, nine years. About that? He's going to say thumbs up or thumbs down. I don't know what he's... Yeah, he said thumbs up. Good. <laughs> Got it right. That's excellent. Um, so I, I think he's a, he's a great um, example of what one can achieve here, just here in Savannah, it, it, amazingly, with the right intention, with the right skill set, with the right tools. You, too, can be a film and television actor from the Southeast. It's, it's crazy. So he's, he's waiting back there in the green room. Uh, I neglected to do the charcuterie board again, and I apologize. I apologize, but I, I've given him lots and lots of water. So hopefully he's, he's good to go. So here he is, ladies and gentlemen, William Mark McCullough. Uh, Hello, guys. sir. How are you? I'm great. Excited to be my show for tonight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's, it's, been, uh, you know, it's been a crazy four days of 2021. <laughs> um, yeah. And so back in March, um, I'm sure you had some projects that were, were going full steam um, and things had to stop. But in the time between now and, and then you were actually able to do something remarkable, which is film, uh, right? Did you write yeah. Savannah Haunting as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, so you wrote, you filmed, and you're now in uh, post-production, or you're in film lock now? Yeah, we're post-production. Oh, very cool. So it's a, it's a busy time for you, I'm sure, and I thank you for coming on. This is, is great that you were able to make the time for that. What has been your experience in trying to film uh, during this time of craziness? Filming during COVID was absolutely the most intense time of my life. Uh, I thought law school was rough. Uh, it didn't hold a candle to trying to make this movie come together. Uh, it's always hard to make a movie, but just the huge barriers that I place uh, in our way because of COVID was, uh, it was hard. It was very hard, but we've got a great team that worked really hard on it. My uh, producing partner, Alexis Nelson, like she really took the lead on dealing with COVID and making sure that everyone was going safe on set. And one of the things I'm so proud of, I mean, we spent five or six weeks doing three COVID tests a week. And each of those COVID tests had anywhere between 30 and 90 people being tested. And we didn't have a single positive uh, result of COVID during that time period. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And so most of your location shoots were done here in the Savannah area and surrounding? Yes. Yeah, so the movie uh, is called a Savannah Haunting. And it's actually, I wrote it based on real experiences that happened in my home. So we, uh, you know, the, the family's home in the movie, we actually shot it at my actual house. Oh. Um, we shot uh, at a great location in Richmond Hill, Myrtle Grove Plantation, which has been in a ton of movies and TV shows. Uh, we got some great locations downtown. Uh, yeah, the city was great. I and mean, everyone, you know, the great thing about shooting in Savannah is people actually love uh, movie making here. Because you know, yeah. it's a little tough, <laughs> a little more tough to do it. 
Uh, but people really went out of their way to help us out and, and give us locations and give us uh, um, lots of resources that we couldn't have gotten in another location. Yeah, and I'm sure that part of that was the excitement just to see something filming in Savannah at that time, you know. Yeah, yeah we were one of the first films in the, in the nation to uh, go back in production during COVID. That's that's crazy and awesome and yeah I'm just I'm proud of you I really am that's that's amazing so we're in post production now what's the next phase well we plan to have the film uh, completed by early February and then it's uh, you know get it with the distributor and we're looking for hopefully a September 2021 release date very cool yeah and will it be streamed will it be shown in theaters or what. You know, no idea yet. <laughs> COVID has, like our sales agents, like, who knows? <laughs> like, who knows? <laughs> everything is just so up in the air. You know? like, I, I'm a big fan of, of some of the streaming services, so I would certainly be open to that. Um, yeah, theaters being what they are right now, it's certainly right now not a viable option, but that may be different in the next, you know, nine months. We just right. have to play by ear. Yeah, I think we have maybe three theaters that are showing films here in Savannah. The the three films that are showing right now, I think. Right. So, yeah, I. I have to imagine it's going to be better then. Uh, quick howdy from Skip Chorus here. Hey, Skip. He's a fellow actor. Uh, he's been on a previous show. And also a hello from that fly that just flew by my head. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I got to ask, when, when did you... I, I wouldn't say when did you know you would be an actor because the story goes that you basically were in law school, you became a lawyer, and uh, you suffered a traumatic accident, mm -hmm. and that was basically a life-changing moment for you. But after that, was that was it just something in the back of your mind that you knew that you wanted to do, or uh, just something clicked with you? Well, you know, I, the funny thing is I did not grow up wanting to be an actor at all. And when I was in college, I went to Mercer University in Macon, and I had to take a an elective, and one of my choices was acting, and I, I went in with such disdain. Uh, I thought it was going to be just a silly waste of time. And the very first monologue that I had to do in my class, it was literally just a classroom, like 14 students. Mm -hmm. I was addicted. I was like, this is amazing. That is the word for it right there, addicted. Yeah, it was yes. like, <laughs> I lit my whole body was on fire when I finished this, this monologue. And... Uh, but the issue, and I think this is an issue with so many college courses and you know, college programs for acting, they focus on the craft of acting, but not one second was spent on how do you turn this craft into a career. Yeah. So I graduated having no idea what to do. So I went to law school thinking that you know, standing in front of a jury would kind of feed that performing thing. And uh, I didn't know anyone as a lawyer. You know, it was one of the folks I hung out with. And then when I started working after law school, I realized well, this is not like LA law. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is not fun. <laughs> so I, I was miserable. I, mean, I was just miserable. And it wasn't the job was bad and the people were great. It's just that it wasn't my calling. And mm -hmm. I knew. But there was that part of me that said, you know, you went to three years of law school, you took out huge amounts of loans. Uh, you, can't, you can't get off this path. And like you mentioned, I was in that car accident down in Nicaragua, and it just opened my eyes. And I thought, what am I doing? You know, I, I'm, I'm taking a safe route, but I'm, I'm, I'm unhappy. I've only been out of law school for six months. What's going to happen six years or 15 years from now? And so when I was healed enough that I could uh, travel back to the States, I just quit my job and decided I'm going to become an actor. And I had no idea what to do, like mm -hmm. literally no idea. And I was in D.C. at the time. I left D.C. and went to L.A. Uh, with like $800 in my pocket. And just, I didn't know anyone in L.A. I didn't know anything. And also, I'd never taken a single class on on-camera acting. Uh, my background had been stage work. And, uh, you know, it's not that hard to make the transition if you know how to do it and you get a little guidance. And there's some people who naturally can do it. I was not one of those people. So it was really oh. hard for me to go from doing stage work to doing the work required for camera, you know, camera acting. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it was, it was tough. I call, I call those early years my ramen noodle years. And I was, yeah. it was, it was hard. But like anything, you know, once you kind of figure out the rules and how it works, um, it started happening. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but yeah, that's kind of my, you know, 
I was not one of those guys who, at the age of seven, knew he wanted to be an actor. It was, it was a little later. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't know until I was 40. So that's... <laughs> and I'm a little older than that now. So I, I, I totally get that. I get that um, 100%. Although I have not quit my day job yet. <laughs> uh, so get gumped. Get gump says go bears. Hmm. Mercer bears. Ah, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, get gumped was also a former guest on the show. Um, I'm not going to say his real name. Forrest Gump. I believe this is his real name actually. <laughs> So uh, among your uh, cavalcade of career, uh, you know, I'm not saying the right words right now. <laughs> it's just it's just coming out. Uh, yeah. Your <laughs> your your uh, your acting jobs. Let's say that. Uh, what's been your favorite so far? Oh, gosh, yeah, hard question. It is a hard question. Yeah, you know, it really depends. For me, so much of it is is the experience. Uh -huh. um, you know, when I was younger, everything was about the future. You know, everything I did was somehow going to lead to something else, which would lead to something else. And when I got really happy in life, it's when I learned to be truly present and enjoy the experience. Um, so, you know, some of the projects I've worked on that were utterly fulfilling to me weren't very successful projects. You know, the movies came out, but they didn't do very well necessarily. Uh -huh. uh, or it was with some actor, like I worked with this actor who, you know, Michael Ironside, that many of you guys may not even know, but he was in the first movie I ever remember seeing as a kid. Like, he was in a movie called Scanners that was my dad's favorite film. I remember Scanners. Yeah, he was the, the, the main villain in Scanners. And yeah. I got a chance to do a, a, a lead role opposite him a few years ago in L.A., and uh, it was just so delightful for me and <laughs> because I just, he has been in my mind since I was literally six years old. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I say a couple. You know, working with Tom Cruise on American Made was just an absolute joy in every respect. Uh, getting, obviously, to work with a dude who, since my youth, I mean, I love Tom Cruise movies. And to see his professionalism and his absolute passion for film was amazing. Every single day, this dude was into making movies. And, and what I loved about it was he had this sense of, let's all make a great movie. It wasn't about him. Uh, you know, I, I got to work with, with several of my kind of childhood heroes. I yeah. worked with Nicolas Cage in the movie. And some of my all-time favorite movies are Nicolas Cage movies. And, uh, and, and, and Nick is, is uh, he's a character. He's definitely a different character. So <laughs> working with him was just, just every day was interesting. It was different. Um, so, but I, you know, I, I have so many things that I really have loved every project I've worked on. Uh, for different reasons. You know, I've been a huge fan of uh, Jessica Alba since Dark Angel. And I got mm -hmm. to work with her on a TV show uh, last year. And she yeah, was that was uh, L.A.'s Finest. L.A.'s Finest, yeah. And uh, she was as nice as I always hoped she would be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, was, it was cool. But, but you know, yeah. I, sometimes I've, some of my best friends in the world I met on super low budget films where we were served, you know, Subway sandwiches where you didn't even get to choose what the toppings were. And, uh, but I met people that I love with all my heart, you know? So mm -hmm. for, for those movies, to me, they hold a special place, even though, you know, they didn't have a big audience watching them. But, um, I can say in all honesty, I have never worked on a film or TV show that I've had a bad time. I've yeah. I would say I would say uh, ninety five percent of that is th is what you bring to it yourself, right? That that uh, the joy that you bring into your job, and that also that commitment. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah. Well, for me, it's just, I feel so fortunate. You know, as a kid who grew up in a trailer park outside of Savannah, Georgia, to get to walk on the set and work with people who are my heroes, playing make believe like I'm seven years old. Like who who could possibly complain about that? You know, so. Every day that I'm working, I just pinch myself, and I'm just so grateful. So, um, yeah, I, I, I can't imagine having a bad time. I'll put it this way. The worst day on a film set is a thousand times better than the best day at a law firm for me. <laughs> so I'll leave it at that. I get that, yeah. <laughs> um, so I made the mistake of uh, attempting to view as many of your projects as I could beforehand. Oh, Lord. Um, I'd already seen American Made, and I thought it was tremendous. I, I love that movie. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's not 
the traditional happy ending at all. <laughs> What's well, based on a true story. Too. Yeah. It's not the kind of character clues no one plays. Yeah, exactly. Um, but <laughs> my last foray was um, uh, the CW Swamp Thing. Okay. <laughs> Yes. And I have to say, it was an iconic performance, a very short performance, yes. <laughs> but sometimes those are the best. I, it really, I was waiting and waiting to see when you were going to show up. And then when you did, I'm like, oh yeah, that's him. That's him. And then, oh, he's gone. <laughs> you know, I die a lot. Uh, yeah. Because I play a lot of villains. Uh, in LA's Finest, that ends with me with six bullet ones in mind in that show. And uh, <clears throat> I die a lot. But I got to say, that show... I got to work with Jennifer Beals, and the little boy in me was just so delighted. To yeah. Work with and again, she could not have been any nicer. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. And then James Wan, I am a huge fan of, and you know, he's the producer of the show. So mm -hmm. getting to be a part of a, of a world that uh, he got a, a hand in. And I'll tell you a funny story. This is actually, you're my cat going crazy. Okay. That's all right. I locked him out, but he's not trying to tell you. Um, <laughs> when I was a little boy, they shot Swamp Thing 2, two miles from my house. And I remember my dad taking me onto the set after they closed down, showing me all like the cool stuff. And and, uh, and I just loved it. And again, I didn't think I was going to be an actor, but growing up and being a part of the world of Swamp Thing, and that kind of tied back to being a kid and, and yeah. those experiences with my dad, my friends, uh, that, that meant a lot. Yeah, I I was personally a huge Swamp Thing fan, and not just from the movies. I collected like all the comic books. Um, I had like stacks and stacks of Swamp Thing comic books, and um, I watched a couple of the episodes before your episode just to get like indoctrinated to the feel of the series. And um, I was pretty excited over the the most minute detail, which was the fact that Ian Zierling is playing. Uh, Blue Devil is also another one of my favorite comic book <laughs> characters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that that in mind, do you enjoy going back and watching your performances? Are you of the type where you like it, you're you're done and you're off the set? I don't want to see it again. I'll, I'll hear what people say, but that's it. Uh, no, it does. You know, because of the fact that with uh, being in the southeast, when I do auditions, you know, we primarily self tape them. Mm -hmm. And so I have to watch myself. So it doesn't bother me at least to watch myself in a, in a performance. But my, my rule is this. If, if the TV show is not a show that I'd be a fan of if I wasn't in it, I'm probably not going to watch it just because I am. Yeah. Uh, like, I love it when I'm in a movie that I'm actually a fan of. You know, I watch, like American Made, I thought was a great film. Uh, I've certainly been in those that are not great films. You know, it's yeah. still a fun experience. Uh, but then, you know, there's some TV shows that I've been in that I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And I watch it as a fan. Um, and there's other TV shows that if I'm not into it, I don't watch it, you know, but it's, it's not really based on, on me. It's just, I'm busy and, uh, right. that's why I'm watching my tell when I go. Yeah. I'm going to boost my internet speed right now just because it's a habit of mine when I'm doing a show. Uh, my wife was doing yoga earlier and using a lot of our, our network. So, um, <laughs> Just want to make sure everybody's getting the best experience that they possibly can. Sure. And uh, there we go. Um, great. So now I took I took your course, mm -hmm. um, not course. I, it, it's really you, you had a um, a workshop uh, back in May, was it? I think. I think so. mm -hmm. Yeah, about May. And I really enjoyed it. It was a full eight hours, I believe, mm -hmm. and. I mean, honestly, you were talking the whole time. I don't know how you did it. You took little breaks, which, you know, of course, is is what I would do as well. But um, what what a gift that that was, not just for me, but for the, I think we said 150 people maybe were watching it. Um, and you, you did that in Zoom, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... First off, thanks for doing that. That was great. Uh, second off, uh, you mentioned before we went on, on air uh, that you had something coming up, right? Yeah, I'm going to do a Zoom class in the next few weeks uh, on how to do uh, self-tape auditions. You know, uh, I said I just finished uh, you know, doing our own film, and so we saw hundreds of auditions. And some of them are amazing, and some of them it's just like, oh, gosh, I wish you had not done that or this or that. Um, but... You can be an amazing actor, but that acting has to be translated through an, a, an audition that you take and 
your agent sends the casting. And uh, I, I see so many people are talented actors, but they just don't learn how to make that transition, how to capture it in the right way. And um, so, yeah, I want to do a class and just go over kind of the foundation um, of how to do how to do those self tape auditions, the mindset, the approach to them. Because I see so many people who create these constraints on their auditions for no reason. Uh, there, there's no uh, there, there's no audition guides implementing the rules. You know, it, it, yeah. it's really like for me. The when you boil it down to the to the nitty gritty, it's have fun. You know, really have fun. Because I believe if you're having fun doing your audition, the producers, the director, the network, the studio is going to have fun watching the audition. Um, and I'm not a big rule follower uh, as a general as a general rule. I <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you and, just uh, broke your own rule. <laughs> yeah, I, I break rules a lot. But that's fun to me. Like when I sit down to do an audition, one thing goes through my mind. What sounds fun to me? Mm -hmm. That's it. I never once think, what are they looking for? What do they want? Oh, is, is my agent or manager or cast member going to be upset if I do this? They can just turn it off. You know what I mean? It's just like, right. it's literally what sounds fun to me. Now, of course, Swipe. Like, Swipe. Yeah, <laughs> now you, you hope that they, that they like what you do, but that's not why I do it. Um, but what I find is as long as you understand some basic concepts of how to work on camera and then jump in and have fun, uh, long term, you have much better results. So, yeah, I want to I do a class. I'll, I'll post it on my social media in the next couple of days. Cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it'll be a, a good chance. It'll be a free class, just a way to kind of give back to the community. Uh, I feel very blessed. So I feel I have an obligation to kind of give to others. That's, that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that I follow you and, and share that information for people out there who want to get into it or get better at it, I think. Because cool. um, every, everybody's doing self tapings self tapes now it's just in LA and New York and I haven't do it with this so yeah yeah awesome well uh Mark I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know you got to get back to uh making those cuts right <laughs> <laughs> but wow it's been it's been great having you here and actually I'll probably be on that zoom as well so I'll, I'll see you then yeah <laughs> well this is a real pleasure uh, yeah glad you had me on yeah absolutely thanks for being on uh I'll see you soon Take care. All right. Bye. Wow. Great, great information, folks, from a superb actor. Uh, if you haven't seen Swamp Thing Episode 5 from Season 1, go watch it now because it's a real treat. Also American Made. And Hillbilly Elegy from uh, Netflix is uh, out there as well. Uh, Mark is also in that, so check it out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have been doing this for almost nine months, nine months. And I want to tell you the reason why I got into it. Um, the real reason that spurred me on to do this is because I love to talk to people. It's just a thing. It's a, it's, it's a mindset. It's, it's, a, it's a tumor that I have to uh, eviscerate, if that makes sense. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense at all, but it's, it's a fact. And uh, the reason why, I want to go back in history, just, just fill you out, flesh, flesh out my story a little bit. When I was maybe nine or ten years old, I discovered this gentleman by the name of David Letterman. And I had already watched a lot of Johnny Carson, but uh, I, I was given a black and white TV set of my very own that I got to watch in my room, and I quietly watched David Letterman late at night, because that's what you did. You watched him late at night. Although he originally had a daily show uh, on one of the networks. Uh, that was his first incarnation. Not a lot of people know that. But uh, that was something that stuck in my mind from a long time ago, that I wanted to get up and talk to people. And that's why I do this, because I love talking to people. And I hope they love talking to me. We'll see if my next guest likes talking to me as much as I'm going to enjoy talking to him. I can't wait. He is so patient and so kind and, and just an all-around good guy. And he's an improviser as well as an actor. And he's just a stand-up American. Can I say that? Can I say you're a stand-up American? Yes, 
as I can. Ladies and gentlemen, from Savannah's Front Porch Improv, John R. Brennan. Hey, can I hear you? No. Yes, I can hear you. There it is. How are you doing? I am so good. I am so good now. Are you so in like a closet of your house? I'm not. Whoa. This is my uh, my wide expanse. If I back uh -huh. up a little, you can yep. see that. It, it, You're in the living room. <laughs> it's oh, actually nice. this is the uh, this is the office space. So this is like my desk where I do all my work behind. Oh, fantastic! This, this curtain here. Yeah. Is. Uh, uh, there it is. That's what I wanted. I yeah, wanted yeah. To, that's not all. That's a curtain. I love it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I gotta, I gotta go full. Let's go full. We're going full. The, the full effect here because behind me is my son's uh, piano. Oh, have you ever played piano? I tried. You tried. What's your go-to right now? Pressure's on. You have to play a song. We all know it's going to be shit, but like, what are you going to play? <laughs> I am going to attempt to play uh, Do Re Mi. Do Re Mi! <laughs> awesome. I, I, I would be doing Ode to Joy. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I don't have to move my hands. It's very basic. Yeah. Um, I remember I uh, got piano lessons in first grade. I had to. And the problem was it was on Monday afternoons, and it was on the other side of the playground. So I literally would ride my bike past my friends playing in the playground to go to piano lessons. So looking back, I now know I would have enjoyed piano lessons, but it wasn't not served correctly to me. No, that yeah. was that's what we call in the industry a hate lesson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I wanted no part of it, but I, I was a polite six-year-old. I was polite because I remember, I still remember the moment when my mom was in the room and the piano teacher said, first things first, John, do you want to learn to play piano? I looked at my mom and I said, yes. And I, I will say for years, I remember thinking, if only I said no. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have had to play it. And then it was when I was a teenager when I thought about that muscle memory. I was like, oh, that's not true. I just would have, got, I just would have been in trouble. I just would have been, gotten yelled at. My mom would have gave me shit for it. <laughs> I oh, still wow. would have had so, to take it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. You still would have had to take it. It's so true. Oh, oh 100%. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So my choice was actually correct, but it would, uh, was a good, uh, taught me a lot of self-hate. Yeah, yeah. For years. So, like, why? <laughs> That's good to learn so it's, six. It, 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 it is good to yeah. learn six. And it, it is very interesting that I have you yeah. uh, after Mr. William Mark McCullough yes. because you have a similar path to what you're doing now as well. Oh, sure, Although, yes. Not we, law school. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're like twins. I'm Danny DeVito. He's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah even yeah, yeah. with a beard. I it's just he's, like he's got talent, ambition, a law degree. <laughs> I, I make up things and not not really good at impressions or Right, right. I can't sure, play sure. the piano <laughs> even if I tried. But you were uh you were originally a, a a ball player, correct? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I was uh I was good at things that required uh um I'm a handful. So I was mm -hmm. a catcher. I was a, funny enough, I was actually a linebacker in football on a state championship team. And just part of that was, I was the smallest one. Um, mm -hmm. in, a, in a different program, I probably would have been a safety at that level. But overall, I was like, oh, I'm just, I'm just a handful. <laughs> yeah, so you and I, in that respect, share nothing in common. Just so Okay, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I yeah, was yeah. not a physical kid at all okay um, i was the guy that i was physically huge yeah um uh, but that was as far as it went so i just basically and I bet they, they, were you tall as a kid yeah oh yeah. I, they, they keep on throwing you into sports because they just told you that's the way a, a boy needs to participate in life well no because so i i was raised at that point in my life by my mother oh, so she did goodness. not yeah <laughs> so that's <laughs> why you mom. are the chris bass we know today Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Thanks, yeah, yeah. mom. Thanks, of, mom. Instead of some broken man. And and there she is. Best experience you've ever had includes me. Oh, is that mom? That's mom. Mom, good job. <laughs> oh, yay. Yes. Um, uh, 
Yeah. yeah. Love our mom. Actually, I'm actually proud of my mom too because she's like, no, you're playing something out. You're playing an instrument. <laughs> and it's and for that reason, that's why you're so musically gifted today. That's so right. Thanks, that's right. So musically gifted. <laughs> it was actually a good mirror to me about uh, stubbornness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I dealt with that in college. I was like, uh, is this really in my interest? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now, at this moment, people are tuning into uh, Wheel of Fortune. Don't yeah. do it. Stay here no, with no, us. No, no, it's, uh, we, we, we're Wheel of, yeah, we're way better than Vanna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little known uh, fact, Vanna's actually from South Carolina. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. She she grew up, I think, in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Van that's White. all. That's all. I, I believe that. I yeah. absolutely I believe guess. Myrtle Beach. That's totally believable. South Carolina. She's on brand for a game show mm-hmm. play. But also, my mother is from South Carolina. So that's right. What part? Uh, she's from uh, West Columbia. Uh, sp- she lives in Springfield, South well, I Carolina. I bet she would now. make fun of Myrtle Beach too. I mean, we all go there still, but we still make fun of it. I mean, yeah. it's got the, what is it, Lazy Rivers, little putt-putt, Miller uh-huh. Lights, yeah. Gator, Gator Golf. Gator Golf, yes. Are I made that up. A, I don't know if that's a thing. It's, it sounds like a thing. What, what um, like, mini golf? Are you, are you good at mini golf? Like, any, any eye-hand coordination, stuff like that? I'm, I'm pretty okay at mini golf. I can, I can you know, You'll I can be in the middle of the pack. The, yeah, I'll be in the middle yeah. of the pack until the end. Get, like, a hole one or two. Okay. Yeah, and then yeah. people are like, whoa! Yeah, whoa, yeah, Chris dude. Bass, George the Top. He wasn't even an athlete as a kid. Ask his mom. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is my mom. This is my mom. Yeah. This is so mom. I turned the like, sound off, but I'm still watching. Yes! Okay, wheel. So she's, she's keeping an eye on you. Wheel. On wheel. wheel. She's watching Wheel. wheel. <laughs> I once worked on Wheel of Fortune when it came through uh, Charleston. Really? Susie! Susie wants to buy a vowel. What's, oh, yeah. what's the vowel you want to buy? We'll see if it's available. What do you think? E, um, E's the one to go with, right? I think E is usually about. the best one. That's like yeah. the famous one, right? Yeah. That's the one they give you. Yeah. yeah. That's the, we're going to start you out with E, yeah. uh, R, S, yeah. and something else. I, I like the energy of Wheel of Fortune when someone like gets a letter and they mm-hmm. just come right in hot with those vowels. Like you can tell, like that was like their strategy. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, yeah. I like to buy an E. I like to buy. Um, I like to buy another vowel. A. Okay. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> it's it's good that I have you here because I've been doing this this sketch writing class, right? Oh yes. Oh, can you pitch it? Uh, so no, I wasn't going to pitch it, but I wanted to talk to you about oh, sketches pitch. in in their essence because I've a, as a background to this course, I've uh-huh. been listening to this podcast almost nonstop, and it's uh, okay. sketch nerds. Uh, Uncle Ted. <laughs> it's not. I, I'm listening to Uncle okay, Ted okay, as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, of good, course. Good. Uncle sketch Ted, nerds. yeah, Sketch Nerds. It's out of uh, D.C. Um, awesome. Are they with yeah. uh, Washington Improv Theater? Bad Medicine. Bad Medicine. Oh, I'm not familiar with them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so cool. um, one of the things that we talked, uh, they, they talked, I wasn't on the show. I'm, I, I, I no, no, wish. No, I, no, no. I, I'm not going <laughs> to fact check that. So just go ahead and talk as if you were there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So one of the things they talk about is the, the game show sketch and, yes. what, and, and how beaten into the ground it is. Now, do okay. you feel that way? You know, my sketch, I am not a, uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know. Yeah. I am. I love doing improv. I, I like, I love performing, but I will say I love, I've seen so much live stuff in my life. Whenever I watch video, it's drama. My ah. wife and I were mad men, you know, uh, killing Eve. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. That, that, I haven't watched I killing Eve. Is that, is that First worth season's it? phenomenal. Really? Yeah, the woman Phoebe that wrote Fleabag. Did you watch Fleabag? Yes. That's the fucking show of the year. Or I mean, yes. was it this year? I mean, season two? Did you see season two? I did. The first episode was like a yes. play. The restaurant? Yes. Oh, my God. Anyone <laughs> on here? That alone, this is theater right here. Phoebe, like, that is one of the best half hours of TV I've ever seen. I, I wanted to be in that play. Like, acting, because it was funny, but it was a drama. It was yeah. so good. And her takes to the things like, yeah, that's what gets my, um, uh, I was going to say, butt boiling. <laughs> yeah. It gets my butt boiling, <laughs> too. It yeah. butt boiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, Fleabag, yeah, that's phenomenal. Um, yeah. So, like, um, so when, 
but I, I will also say when sketch it's that's an inch my question is the kinds of person that's like our friends right that mm-hmm. watches sketch sketch comedy so intensely then they will have takes what's beaten into the ground mm-hmm. where to me my um audiences is live audiences that i've always worked with people and yeah. towns right yeah. so we like even at you know um at, you know Susie's here like at Adlot or Front Fourteen Improv or Theater Ninety Nine in Charleston, we're counting on the public. Like, yeah, like that group, in a great way, has no idea what the difference is between improv sketch and stand up. Like, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They you're literally right. Just Absolutely. Think, are you funny or are you not? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that, which is an advantage uh-huh. and a disadvantage. Yeah, yeah. But they they come in. I paid ten bucks. I'll be here for 90 minutes, make me laugh, thank you so, right? That's, that's what comedy is, actually, right? That is the art form. Like, that, again, that's why Mike is doing what he's doing. And, and, and I'm over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Chris Susie, of course, says, sometimes why? Sometimes think, why? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I like that. Do you get half off? <laughs> Would you buy that? I, I think yeah. so. I think they don't, like, you don't have to spend as yeah, much. 50 cents um, on the dollar. Yeah, Ryan McCurdy yeah. says, thing. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Oh boy. I guess. Hmm. I, I don't even. I already don't know what the first word is. I, uh, I have no idea what the first word yeah, is. Yeah. Ooh. Let's, um. Let's see. Uh, well, let's put it up again. Oh, no, do I have to buy a vowel? Ryan, can I buy a vowel? <laughs> Ryan, can we yeah. can we buy a vowel? Yeah. Yeah. He's not gonna answer. No, that's fair. That's fair. He's yeah. back to Wheel of Fortune, and maybe maybe he's just ripping this off. The episode is. of Wheel of Fortune tonight, and how he wants us to help him because he's he, he's got his you know his father-in-law in there. He's got to beat him to it. That yeah, is yeah. that is an idea. That's what I should just start doing. I should just start watching Wheel of Fortune with people. So, do you think sketch comedy, the game show genre, is overdone? What what was your take, Chris? That's so what I want to know. that's what the people want to know. So my take is no, um, okay. because as long as there's a way to spin it in a new way. Oh man, I just hit my mic. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, I'll hit it again just so I know what it, it sounds like. Yeah, as long as there's a new way to spin it, you know, it's it's and you can make it fresh. It's not dead. Uh, now I will give an example just because it's in my mind right now. Is uh, that Mitchell and Webb look? It's a, a sketch comedy series that comes out of the UK. Yeah, um, they did something called, and maybe somebody is someone in the audience knows the name of the sketch because we'll make it up. Oh, oh, it's it's something not no num 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 Ah, I can't think of it. Keep going. But it's it's brilliant because it's so simple. Basically, the the contestants just keep yelling out numbers. Okay. But the format is clear. It's clearly a game show, so that's what makes it. And and you're just you're captivated. Wait, so what's the? I don't understand what it is. So what? So what happens? So he, the the guys he he says oh, welcome to blah blah blah. Here's our contestants back from last week. So and so he's from yeah. Cornwall. Uh, what do you do in Cornwall? Not much. Uh, and this is so and so from Number Wang. It's called Number Wang. Thank okay. you, Chris Jean Susie. Uh, yes. But yeah, if if you have a chance to see it, watch it. Okay. It 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 holds the format, but it's it's just you're just. The whole time you're like on the edge of your seat because you don't know what what they're going to say next, but you do, but you don't know why. So it's okay. it's uh, it's ludicrous. It's ridiculous. It's the word is that type of sketch comedy that Monty Game Python. Game show sketch comedy. No, just absurd. Um, absurd. Absurd. Yes, it's the absurd. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what really I love the absurd. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so all right, so let's get back to your sketch. All right, so you got a sketch idea. All right, you're gonna so pitch. I'm going to pitch. You know, nine out of ten ideas are bad. So yeah. the odds aren't good here, Chris, because these are all your friends. Watch. Okay, okay. And that's so... the beauty of comedy. <laughs> is is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This isn't yeah. one that I've pitched to individuals in the group yet. So I'm just gonna we're gonna go uh, fresh here. Okay, go fresh. This is my daughter and I were walking the other day. Actually, my son and I were walking uh-huh. the other day, and uh, there's this this trench on the side of the road, and we were uh-huh. imagining. What if that were soup? The, the, so what was on the side of the road? Side a trench. Road? A trench. A trench. Okay, like yeah, a puddle? Yeah. Eh, more like a, you know. Like is it in the ground? Is it a trench on the ground? Alongside the road. It's not a trench. It's called a ditch. A ditch. It's a ditch. Okay, gotcha. 
But okay. it would be a, it would be a soup dish. What if that was dish. soup? In that what dish? if it were soup? Yeah. Did it look like soup? It could be. Like, did, she, did she agree when you said that? Well, he agreed. So it wasn't my daughter. It was my son. Oh, I was very son. confused okay. that day. Um, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're suffering from an eclipse right now, John. I don't know. I know. You saw that change? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, when I got your, the sex of your children wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It, the, the darkness, the darkness yeah. came over. But yeah, it was just, it, it looked like a brothy material, and I imagine uh -huh. it would make good soup. Um, okay. So that's, that's, the, that's just the nugget. That's just the nugget of the sketch. So, oh, gotcha. So the exploration that. is what if there was soup in a ditch yeah. on the side of the road? Yeah. All right. That's what would you do with that? I don't know what I would do with that. That's great. Uh, so um, let's see here. Uh, let me, I'm trying. I'll put my improv hat on, right? Mm. So, like, what is soup? Like, uh, soup in the ditch, the side of the road. What would I do with that? Would you? Uh, I guess. I guess I need more questions from your point of view. Because okay. So, so second up, like you environment. Your, you people well, no, like no, actually. What's missing for me, and this is my improv hat on, yeah, is yeah. the perspective, like, did you think it was soup? Like, what made you say that? Like, that's what I need to understand more for my, for, for me to step into your shoes okay. and see the perspective. Because I, like, I feel like, like we had been walking a long time, uh -huh. and I was did starting to hungry? get hungry. Yes. Been hungry. Yeah. 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 And so, it looked appetizing to me. So, Grant, what did your son say? When you did that, does he does he does he join in with your jokes? He, he does join in a little bit, yeah. So okay. he's imagining: would it be a bisque? You know, would it be? Uh, you know. So to me, that's what's interesting and funny. That's also why I'm attracted to dramas that are actually kind of funny, like you know, like Arrested Development. That's the shit I love. Situational oh, yeah. comedies, you know, um, and it's it like Parks and Rec, situational comedies. So that being said, you're that like I'm looking for your behavior is yeah. funny to me. So it's not that it's funny that. To me, it's not funny that soup's in a ditch. To me, it's funny that you guys were walking and you just saw <laughs> a ditch of rainwater. It's like, yeah. hey, wouldn't that be great if that was soup? <laughs> and then your son's like, yeah, or maybe a lobster bisque. <laughs> like that, like that is funny to me. Yeah. And that's where uh, the skill sets of the uh, improv um, mm -hmm. and chemistry, it's funny watching you and me, we're actually laughing at our enjoyment and our uh, actually yearning, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for soup. And now my question would be is, uh, why are you guys walking? Is it, was it COVID yet? Or were you guys just like, is it the exercise or is it your time together? Or is well, it beautiful? Out? Time together, had to get out of the house. Yeah, those two things. Uh, yeah. were the genesis for it. So, so I, I, father well, I son try, moment, you know. So I would I would look for so I would I would probably enjoy you guys walking, capture the father son, and let, let's let's actually improvise it. And okay. I, I'm going to try and do a thing called handcuffing you to it. All right. right. All right. So uh, we're walking. Dad, Dad, look, the sun's about to go down. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Huh. Man, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just think that ditch kind of looks like soup. Oh my god! Yeah, Dad, it looks like a lobster bisque. When have you had lobster bisque? I've never had it. That's, really? I, I've never had. You had lobster bisque, Dad? I have never had lobster bisque. It amazes me that you would think of that because, yeah. Well, I mean, well, I mean that's I, I I'm hungry, Dad. Like, what do you what do you think it looks like? Uh, I was thinking more of a consomme. Well, consomme. What's that? Well, it's about like a broth. It's kind of weak. It's kind oh. of a weak soup. So I was really impressed with your lobster bisque. You know that that came out of left field. Oh, Dad, can we just go home and eat now? We could. Or but as you always say, we won't get our ten thousand steps. See, yeah, right? Like I would want that. Like, what's the thing that's going to keep driving you to keep walking? Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. And then. Let's say, yeah, you're right. Ten thousand steps. That's what we got to do. That was our promise for this month. So that's even yeah. some arbitrary that start walking. Hey, hey, Dad, uh, see that puddle up there? It's like a she crab soup. She crab soup. Yeah. Oh man, I could go for some she crab soup. Oh yeah, Dad, yeah. Ooh, 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 Dad, look at that puddle. 
Dad. Yeah. I don't think that's a puddle. I think that's actually chicken noodle soup. I think you're Dad, right. Somebody dropped chicken noodle soup on the ground. And it's still warm. Dad, they can touch it. Ew, gross. It looks oh, delicious. Gross. Dad, no. Dad. Let's go home. You, you can't eat soup off the ground. I have and no idea what's going on right now, but okay. someone is bringing some game to us. I have no idea. Do we know who Coloni Kelly is? No, come on in, Coloni. So Coloni wants to know, are we ready? And then they came up with this. What is it? I is a little like bees, ready to choose, comes over, choose, do's, a little nice poems and luxurious trimmings. Oh, All I don't right, know what well. that means, but uh, I think you're in the wrong room, Coloni. Yes, yes, I, uh, yeah. But if you want some soup, stick around. We, we got soup. We got soup so, for every one of you. So, so that's something I like to look for is behaviors as mm -hmm. far as that goes. That way it's like something to act out. Yeah. Uh, like what is a sketch that I wrote? Uh, again, I don't usually write sketches. But I usually just, like, so you're, you're more like character driven? Yeah. But actually, I mean, I guess because it's my character, like it's me. <laughs> Like, no, that's why it's, it's literally cause and effect. It's behavior that's funny to me. I mean, old school, because we're the same age, Seinfeld, right? Like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, it's like situational comedies. So yeah. that, that's why I like to say it's more so, so sometimes character, if that's mm -hmm. what their perspective is. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, like to me, I remember one time, uh, this is a sketch that I worked on, was uh, I was on the sidewalk and this guy pulls up and parks. And it, what, it wasn't clear if it was a legal spot or illegal spot. There was no parking meter, but it wasn't yellow. Okay. And he rolls down his window. He goes, hey, can I park here? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. He's like, I didn't, I didn't see any yellow paint. I was like, yeah, I guess. And, but then he goes, would you park here? <laughs> and it's like, like, he's passing off this responsibility. And that's what's funny to me. You oh, see what man. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and that's like when we've been rehearsing, I like to, I, I work on, I like to work on that. Is like, uh, that's the top of the tenses we're talking about. Like, mm -hmm. for even um, you making the choice to touch the chicken noodle soup, I'm now going to aggressively ground it to say, Dad, that's gross. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But also, that's where even like an improv, I would invite you, in like, if you're absurd, like, oh, yeah, it is gross. Oh God! But I love it. it smells anyway. bad too. Oh, oh, oh it tastes bad. I like, yeah. like it, yeah, yeah. But, it's, but you're, you 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 are confirming the reality yeah. that it is gross. Yeah. Because just because someone says it's gross doesn't mean it's gross, right? Chocolate cake. Oh, that's gross. No, it isn't. It's chocolate mm -hmm. cake. It's delicious. It's delicious. Oh my God. So you, you see what I mean? Like yeah. That that's again the relationship of the two improvisers or mm -hmm. the two comedians. I'm like, what's the agreed reality? So that way it actually heightens and isolates the absurdity to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, I did call Dr. Peppers. He's like, take the two fronts up a pony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, don't yeah. know what that means. That's but it sounds it. a little adulty. It, it, um, it's a little adulty. It's a little <laughs> uh, Ryan McCurdy comes in with uh, the next yeah. puzzle. Hmm. Next puzzle. All right. I'm going to... I'm going to buy an A. A uh, person, I see. Something <laughs> Kelly? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, our, it's our other friend that's been introducing oh, nice. topics to us. Uh, Coloni Kelly is who that is. Coloni uh, Kelly. Ryan McCurdy. Um, yeah, yeah. I may buy a vowel. I've already solved the puzzle, Ryan. So what's, your, what's another sketch you're pitching? Okay, so another sketch that I'm pitching is... Uh, this is one that was actually developed by my daughter and I, and it's oh, called. Oh, good. Credit um, it correctly. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's going to have to be your son in a second. Yeah, yeah. So it's called. Uh, oh gosh, barnacle, barnacle blokes on the bluff. I love it. Barnacle is it like a talk show. No, no. Okay. It is the third installment of Mary Poppins. Barnacle blokes on a bluff. On the third bluff. Third installment of what's the so Mary Poppins. Southern? No, okay. no, no, though. They're very cockneyed. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, we barnacle blokes in the bluff. Oh, you gotcha. Know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We pick the barnacles off the boats and we hop. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. I forget that part of that scene. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, so they might hop the from boat, boat to boat. And there's probably a song, a jaunty song that they sing. Uh, 
So what do the barnacle bl- the barnacle blokes on the bluff do? Like what? Like was it? Well, they scrape. How, how, how are you sc- going to showcase these characters? They scrape the barnacles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, what's the scene? And they covered in filth. Yeah. Those two things. They scrape the barnacles. They covered in filth, and they love Mary Poppins. So oh, what? you're great, man. Wait, wait, so oh, they love her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they love her. That's, that was, that's a different sketch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, I would love, like, so that's actually, yeah, so, your friends, the Will Fortune, like, so you have, you guys have these two fun characters. Uh-huh. I would actually start, and that's where I would, I would use improv to try and figure out what's the best vehicle mm-hmm. to showcase you and your daughters, barnacle blokes on the, uh, on the bluff yeah where it's yeah. like welcome back to barnacle blokes on the bluff <laughs> first things first top five appetizers in savannah georgia and then or whatever that way you the vehicle is opportunity i see for your I characters see. to have opinions i got right? it got it welcome yeah, yeah, back yeah. To barnacle blokes on the bluffs today we are doing a food tasting right yeah, like, or, uh, yeah. uh today we will now listen to the top three singles on apple itunes not the whole thing. Not the whole thing. Yeah. And we review it. You see what I mean? So yeah. you have the characters, and then you give them, like, that's the dinner point, is what's the vehicle to get their opinions out? Yeah. 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 Got it. I mean, you put it on a game show. Welcome yeah. back to Barnacles on a Bluff. <laughs> yeah. First question of the night. <laughs> First question of the night. If you are a Barnacle Blue... And you were offered at a pub a Guinness. Would you pay four pence? Five pence? I don't know, but like. I'd right? pay a whole guinea. That's correct. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> All right, one bloke's on the board. Yes. See, the game show sketch isn't dead. It's back. No, it's not dead. It's, it's, it's alive again with. Oh, we love Mary Poppins. Oh, Mary Poppins. Yeah. She hates her guts, but we love her all the same. Yes. Um, see, that would be funny. Like, to have these guys be so, you know, in tune with Mary Poppins, just as the chimney sweeps were, just as the lamplighters were. And, and they, she in tune, uh, you know, love them. But, yeah. you know, these guys love her, but she detests them. They're like the, the scrub. In the movie, does she detest them? No, no, not at all. That's the whole point. Like, she, she does not like the barnacle blokes on the bluff. Oh, okay. Are they like yeah. the bad guys? No, no, not at all. Oh, no. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Wait, no. In the movie, does she not like them or she does like them? There are no barnacle blokes on the bluff in the movie. I, I, oh, there's I not. Oh. No, no, there's, they, don't, they don't exist. <laughs> These, they exist in my mind in an Isle of Hope somewhere. It. They're dancing an Isle of Hope, I think. I love it. I love it. I love uh, it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So uh, there's just these two blokes that just love Mary Poppins. Yeah. They love Mary Poppins. Where yes. are you, Mary Poppins? Yes. You never come to see us anymore. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that'll that'll have to exist at some point, I'm sure. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Wow, we have gone so not long. Actually, it hasn't been long. But no, no, it hasn't been long. But I'm going to pitch some improv classes. Yes, right, please I, do. I, I pitch, 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 pitch. Friends, 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 friends. Uh, but also, we've already all supported each other and love each other and all know each other. <laughs> so, yeah. But we have um, some improv classes coming up for the month of January. Um, um, if you're comfortable and safe to come on out, uh, we do all the COVID rules. All students and staff wear face shields or masks uh, and all that jazz. The theater will be sanitized before each after class. And the uh, classes will only have about eight to ten students. And we got a big old space in here. So, mm-hmm. we have. Drop-ins on Tuesdays. That's right. That is ten dollars. If you want to come in from seven to nine any Tuesday, it's just a one-off. You don't have to have any experience at all. Chris, do you have to have any experience? You do not have to have any experience at all. Nope. Nope. Come on in. It's also it's adults playing pretend. It is just improv. It's not like we're carpenters where you better know how to do something. No, nah, just come on in. Be yourself. Then we have level one. This starts on January thirteenth. I know we have five spots left in our class there. That is improv on Wednesdays, seven p.m. to nine p.m. Hey, what if you don't have time to take a class, but your friend does? In fact, Chris Bass did this. Chris Bass sponsored someone else who can't afford classes right now. So if you're in a position and you'd like to help out an improv theater during these COVID times, that is $155 if you don't mind sponsoring someone. 
Then we have level two classes because, hey, you might have a little bit of experience. I get it. That's going to be on Thursday nights. That's a lot of seat work is what we'll be working on in that. Uh, oh, that's Tuesday nights, excuse me. Mm. And then, hey, Chris has babies. I have babies. We got some improv for kids. We got elementary kids on Tuesdays, grades one to four. I know I'll be jumping in there. My good friend Hannah, um, she's going to be running that class right there. Then we have Bree and I are going to be working with middle schoolers. That's fifth grade to eighth. That is on Tuesdays. And then improv class for high schoolers on Wednesdays. That's what? Right. Did you say high schoolers? I sure did. Do you know any? I have a high schooler. Bert, what do you think? Come on in. We got Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Let's All see right. what we got going on here. I, I think Coloni, Kelly, get out yeah. there and do some improv because we yeah, could yeah. use well, your point of view. I, I think I think she's self-taught. <laughs> self-taught, ready to go. Absolutely. Pat Tompkins, Brennan says, front porch improv. Oh, there comes my mom. Yeah, Patsy. Mom's abound. And uh, mom, I apologize for, for Coloni. She's an old friend. It's, That's right. Old yeah. friend. But yeah, the high school classes are on Wednesdays, five thirty to six forty-five. You got Excellent. a high schooler? What do you think? And that's ninety-five bucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nine bucks. You said ninety-five. Ninety-five bucks for the series. But for you, Chris, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be ninety-five dollars. Yeah, yeah, okay. so. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to solicit. You got to solicit. You got Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, wow, that's great, uh, John. It is uh, outstanding to have you here in the studio. I Thanks understand so for me. that your little space there was not as up to par as mine, but it's okay. It's One, okay. Day. One, One day. One day we'll get there. One day we'll get there, yeah. <laughs> um, are, you, are you at the space right now or are you at home? Yes, I am at the bar at the space right now. Oh, let's see yeah, let's, let's give a little, little tour here. Little, That'd be great. Tour. Here we go. This is the little bar area. There it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so What's you your feature drink of the week? Feature drink. Oh, this is the Ace Pineapple Hard Cider. Ooh. It's tart and it's been our bestseller, actually. Nice. People have been drinking nice. that shit up. Yeah. There we go. There oh, we and go. that's the improv space right there. That's you can the see magic. chairs are, are nicely separated for people who are concerned that's about right. that. So we'll space this all out, mm -hmm. clear up these tables, socially distance, and go ahead and do the improv steps right in here, my friends. Um, nice. Go ahead and do some improv classes right there. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. And when, do you have any shows coming up, sir? We have shows on Fridays and Saturdays, 8 o'clock. This Friday, we have a show called Hot Takes. That's our good buddy, Matt and Chris. But they have hot takes about shit that's not important at all. That's the whole idea. They've argued about pancake and waffles. They've argued about Pepsi versus water. Not Coke. Mm. Pepsi mm -hmm. versus water. So... In fact, oh, oh, we'll do hot takes right now. This will be fun. Okay. So, Chris, all right, let's go. All right. All right uh, the fact that you're stuck there. Uh, let's see. Uh, how about a uh, candle? What's the opposite of a candle? Uh, I would bulb. say, uh, gosh, like soup, I would think. Soup is opposite of a candle? <laughs> well, like wax soup. No, see, wax, now, wax soup. Now, now let's, okay. let's no, go no, back no. to the sketch. Now I want to go back to the sketch. Okay. Now, now it's a character sketch. You just love soup. I love this soup. guy. Just, just loves soup. I like that. I like to think it will start like where you're in a situation that uh, you think a shitty soup's a better soup, mm. Mm. and then like you're eating something else, and then you keep on making go back to soup. Yeah. 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 All right. So, so hot take. What's okay. your hot take? You want? We got. We're not going to do soup. What's the, what's the opposite of a candle? I feel like a light bulb. Do you know okay, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Light bulb versus candle. Perfect, perfect. Do yeah. you want to argue a light bulb or candle? I'm going to argue candle. All right. You got three seconds. Three, two, one. Argue on candle. So candle, you know, it's portable. You can take it anywhere. The light exudes from the top, and it offers heat. Heat that uh, can take away moisture. So if you're in a wet condition, you can use it in a cave and get rid of all that moisture all around there. You know, uh, of course, there is the, the downside that the drop may hit it, but it's easy to avoid that because it's so portable. It's so portable. It's so handy. You stick it in your pocket. Make... All right. That was candle, folks. I'm going to come in and argue why light bulb is better. Yes. All right. Guys, light bulb is a human existence example of success and evolution of technology. That's what the light bulb is. Do you guys know that the first light bulb is still on? 
Right, right now, the first light bulb has been running actually for over like 90 years. It is still on where it is. And also the light bulb can be used in many different areas. It can be used in all your rooms of the house where the key, like I can go to sleep with the light bulb still on. Do you know who used candles? Cavemen, cavemen. That's it. They, fire was like a big deal to them. They're idiots. They're ogres. They would they would beat up each other for food. Yeah. That's uh yeah. We're so I, think to, one. I think yeah. candle one. I think candle one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would. Uh, we got to put the vote out. I think if if people yeah. want to. Well, it depends if your mom still watches Will Fortune or my mom still watches. Well, my mom Fortune. says thank you, John. I enjoyed it, so I think she's moved on to. Uh, oh, thank watch. you, Donna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It, well, whereas your mom comes in hot with light bulb. Yeah. Light Jeez. bulb, see? There it is. Pat knows. <laughs> Pat, knows. Pat knows where her breath buttered. I would, I would, uh, can I add an argument? Sure. Scrooge. Candle. Duck? Scrooge. Candle. Wait. Ebenezer Scrooge. Scrooge. Oh, Ebenezer the, Scrooge. The man, yeah. he's all the time with the candle. Yeah. And, and he had lots of money. Oh, yeah, well, that was like that gas lantern era, right? Right, oh, right. Yeah, boom, yeah. Scrooge. Um, you there, what day is it? Why it's Christmas Day? Why it's Christmas Day? Why it's Christmas you mean, Day? You mean the one as big as I am? Yeah, yeah. The very one. <laughs> yeah. Sc Sc Scrooge learned his lesson so well that he woke up the next day and helped one poor family. <laughs> that's it. One, one. That's one it. poor family. Yeah, and it was the it. one yeah. he knew. It's the one he knew. It's the one that was on his payroll. Jeez, man. The one that he, <laughs> he was on his payroll. What a guy! What a guy! He's an excellent man, excellent and and man. he and he was he was he was better he was better for it in the long yeah. run. Well, once I meet myself the other day, it was pretty good. It was like, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Christmas sucks, and the ghost said, "No, you suck." And he's like, "Ah, Christmas is great." <laughs> oh, whoa! Where'd he go? He's he's totally dark now. He went away. Oh, no, that was, I think that was uh, one of the uh, three spirits came in. Probably yes. the death one at the end. Yes. He invaded your. So, um, great. All wonderful. Right. Looking forward to classes with Front yep. Porch Improv as yes. well as performances coming up this weekend. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. And we got, uh, yeah, well, performance coming this weekend. So we got hot takes on Friday. Hot we takes. got fun house on Saturday. Fun house. Yeah. And then awesome. we have a pure bar event Saturday morning. They're coming in here doing mm. a little bit of workout, and then we're doing some improv. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. So we do have a uh, tradition here at the show, and it yeah. will ring true with you, I'm sure. Okay. You remember back in the 80s and the 90s and the sitcoms, and at the end of the sitcom, there's we always that, that the moment. Lesson? That yeah, yeah, moment. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But oh, it's no, not wait, the lesson. The moment, not the lesson. Okay. This is the moment after the lesson where everyone reacts. So it's the reaction freeze. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So you go ahead and say your soup joke. Okay. And then, we'll, then, <laughs> All right. then we'll laugh and freeze, right? Okay. I could do, yeah. Okay. My yeah. soup joke. Yeah. Oh, man. That soup, it's like not just clam soup, 